In this video, we're going to get the old Articat here ready for the season. So sit back and I'll show you what I'm going to do. All right, this is my 2002 ZR800 Cross Country Edition uh, that I've had for the last, oh, I think five years now. This might be the sixth season I've had it. Um, year after I got it, I went ahead and I did a uh, U, uh, Trax USA rail extension kit on there to go from the 121 to a 136. It also came with a tunnel extension there. I've been super happy with that, but this has been my main sled for the last uh, five years here, so... It had 5,300 on the odometer when I got it, and we are at 10,159 miles now, so it's been a great sled. Um, a couple weeks ago, I did start this sled up for the first time this season, and everything went well. But before I did, I did a compression test, and I've got 135 on one side, 140 on the other. The exact same as, as the day I bought it, so this engine's still pretty healthy, it seems like. Usually starts in one or two pulls uh, under, you know, no matter what conditions when I've been riding it. So it's been great. So what we're going to do today is uh, take take a look at things and uh, get it ready for the season here. So normally what I like to start off with is um, going under the skid here and just giving everything a once over. So take a look at my bogey wheels. Make sure that nothing's, you know, loose and wobbly. Uh, I can see this one's starting to get a little bit of a dry crack on their dry rot in the rubber up here so i might want to consider replacing those but you know just make sure nothing's excessively loose everything rolls nice and free you know that type of thing up here right um i've already done a little bit of this but that's you know typically what i do and take a look at my my back wheels here obviously i won't be able to spin those because i got weight on it right now but um take a look at all that um also take a look at my scratchers and make sure that those are in good position there um and then I want to go ahead and I, oh, one more thing to check up here. So I've got my, it's hard to see in here, I know, but um, I've got my shocks, shock here, dial adjust shock right here, and all of the cables that go with it. Make sure that that's all intact. Nothing looks like it's leaking, hung up, wore through, or anything like that. So I think that's all in good shape. Um, now I want to go ahead and I want to grease everything. Well, one more thing before I get there, too. My, uh... My slides here, I can see, are starting to wear down. So I'm going to go ahead and order myself a new pair here. I went, I made it through, um, I think, a season and a half on this set. So I went 1,000 miles last year. So um, these are going to be due. They're not quite, you know, wore out yet, but it's always good practice for me just to replace them at the beginning of the season. But we'll address that later. So we're going to leave that now. Um, first thing I'm going to do is grease it. So I don't know if you'll be able to see it or not, but... There is a grease zerk up here and one on the other side. Um, let's see. There's one down in here. I don't know, I'm kind of pointing to it. It's right back there on the back side of where this um, where this shock mounts. Uh, where else? Here. We got one right there, one down there. I think I'm missing some here, but um, I'm going to go ahead and get grease in all of the zerks I can find back here. I'm also going to come up here to the front, try to clean this up a little bit, but there is a grease zerk up here on both sides for my uh, for my front steering up there. So I'm going to go, go ahead and put a few shots of grease in all of those, and then I will uh, bring you back. Just thought I'd show you guys this. Uh, for, for those of you who haven't seen this product, this is called a lock and lube. Now, I'm not sponsored by them or anything like that, but this is just something I found very valuable, very helpful for uh, greasing things. So basically, you push that button there. This goes out and it locks onto the, it slips over the grease zerk and locks on. And this doesn't come off. Um, I've used this on some of my tractors where, you know, grease zerks that have been on there for 70 years and all pack, packed full of all kinds of stuff. This thing will get grease in there, and it's real nice, too, because once this is clamped on, then you can put both, both hands on your grease gun, too. Um, they also make a 90-degree fitting here, too, where um, you clamp the lock and lube onto this. For those uh, grease zerks that you can't really get to straight up and down, this slides in there and locks on um, easily, too, and I'm able to 
grease everything with this bad boy. So they're a little pricey. I think they're like 40 bucks, but it's been well worth it for uh, the stuff I do. I do a lot of greasing. So um, anyways, so I've got all of my Zerks greased up all around the sled here. So now we're going to um, pop the hood open and uh, work on some stuff in there. So let me get myself set up and I'll show you what we're going to do. All right, I've got our hood up and I've got us positioned here by our clutches. So I've already removed my, my uh, drive belt here, which I don't need to show you guys how to do that. You'll, you should all know how to do that probably. But um, anyways, um, I'm going to remove my secondary for two reasons. A, I'm going to go through and try to do some maintenance on my secondary to make sure everything is as it's supposed to be. And B, once the secondary is out of the way, it's going to make it easier to access where our, um, our drive shaft bearing is down there. Um, to pull the cover off and clean off all the old grease. So I'm going to work on getting this secondary off. So basically all you need is a half inch wrench. Loosen up our main bolt in the middle there. Should come out pretty easily. Of course I say that on camera and it's never going to work out that way. Come on. See? Told you it's not working out well, is it? Alright. Make sure that comes out. Make sure you keep all your washers and you know spacers and whatever else is on there in order and on the on the bolt. You can see. Whoop, focus. Well, I'm gonna have to I'm gonna want to clean that up a little bit and make sure that that doesn't bind up. There's just a little bit of like soot on there from the uh, the belt it looks like. So maybe a little bit of corrosion. So we'll go ahead and clean that up so it should go in there a lot easier. But um, now I should be able to slide my secondary off. This one is a little snug. So sometimes it's a bit of a wrestling match, but normally if you just keep wiggling it like that, and I'm gonna go ahead and hit it with a little bit of a lubricant down there in the shaft. And we'll go back in. Oh boy. All right, one second. Yep, sorry about that. I still have my skis on the rollers, so I, uh, I one of the skis fell off the rollers, so I got the skis planted on the ground now. So anyways, just keep wiggling that secondary, and you can see I got it, I got it to slide all the way back here. Um, another tip too, you can see the keyways right here. It's gonna make life easier later on if you have the uh, that drive shaft or jack shaft positioned so the keyway is up. That way, when you put the secondary back on, you can see where it is and the keyway will sit right in there. So I'll show you that once we reassemble. But anyways, um, I've got my secondary basically all the way back to the, uh, to the uh, um, cowling here. And there is going to be enough room for me to force myself back and get the secondary out. So let me slide my keyway up so it's out of the way. There, there we go. Just like that. All right. Secondary is off. So we're going to go ahead and throw that on the bench here. Then I'll bring you back for the next step. One second. All right, so there is our cover for the uh, drive shaft down there. And this is also your speedometer cable that goes in there, and I'll show you that once I crack it open. This isn't actually anything leaking. That's just that penetrant I sprayed down there. One more thing, too. There is a grease jerk right here that you can get to for the uh, jack shaft bearing. Um, that's not obviously in the chain case. So pop that little red cover off and get some grease in there while you have the secondary off. It makes life a lot easier. All right, so anyways, I'm going to go down here, and I'm going to pop off. There's three half inch bolt or uh, nuts on there um, and pull that cover off and we'll take a look at what that looks like inside there so one second all right let's get that bearing cover off so again half inch wrench uh, or half inch socket rather go ahead and So there's a bolt on the back side here you might have to push in a carriage bolt there all right and then we'll get our other one there we go all three are off all right so now let's pull off that cover and see how we're looking in there there you can see hopefully you can see whoop can't get you up too close, but you get a bunch of old grease in there. You definitely want to clean all that stuff out. And we're going to pump it all full of fresh grease there. So um, 
go ahead and clean it off off camera. One thing I know here too is we got our, this is your keyway, your key for your speedometer. It goes in here and it also go, there's a, it slides into the uh, drive shaft itself on there too. So just make sure you don't lose that, you know, get that cleaned up, inspect it for damage too, you know, that sort of thing. Um, once you get this cover off too, it's a good idea to uh, go underneath and play with your drive shaft to see if that's getting loose. Um, usually these things last only about three to 5,000 miles before you want to replace it and I'm getting there. So I'm just going to check to make sure that um, we're not loose or anything and that we're still in good shape. So I'm going to go ahead and get that all cleaned up and then I'll bring you back when we reassemble it. So one second. Okay, got everything all cleaned out in here and down there. So now it's time to reassemble. So um, I usually take my keyway and I put it inside of my um, cover here, my speedometer drive first. And then I go ahead and I work it back into the drive shaft. And it's going to be, should come out in the exact same spot as it was. This thing is square, so um, it is, you know, kind of clocked. So as long as you didn't move your... Your track at all um, everything's going to go back together well so should be able to just go ahead and easier said than done there we go i think we're back in yep okay um i should note too i did check my drive shaft for play it doesn't move up and down or left and right at all so i think it's still in pretty good shape as far as the bearing goes um i'm not really worried about the other side because that's in oil in the chain case but um i think we're in good shape all right so I went ahead too and I clean up my nuts a little bit just to make sure that they go on easier. But now we can go ahead and reassemble this and then we'll fill it with grease. So let's, uh, let's go ahead and get these nuts started. I'm going to use my ratchet, my electric ratchet to finish the job here. The bottom one's a little tough because you can't see it, but it's there. Just take your time, you'll get it on. There we go. All right, so we'll take our ratchet, tighten things back up. I usually, I usually try to go round and round and round and round and round, so I'm not just tightening, you know, one at one, one side at once. So you probably do have to reach back here and push on that carriage bolt just to make sure it's in where it's supposed to be. Now, so you probably don't need your hand back there anymore. We're in good shape. All right, uh, now we'll hop over to the bench and we will start working on our secondary. So uh, give me a minute, I'll bring you over there. Oh, first, actually, we gotta fill it with grease. Well, what, what am I thinking? Getting ahead of myself here. All right, so now that we got everything where it's supposed to be, we'll go ahead and we'll fill this bad boy with grease. Give her about 30 pumps to get her good and full. Um, that seems to be what works good with my uh, my grease gun. I've checked it, you know, I've, I've pumped it full and checked to see what it looks like, but that seems to be about the best. All right, so now we can go ahead and take you over to the workbench. So stay tuned. All right, we're on the workbench and we need to take the secondary apart. So I'll show you what we're gonna do once we get it apart. But um, basically in order to do that, so this is under spring tension right here from my, from my spring inside there. So I wanna be able to loosen up these nuts here and not have it go bing, right? So I've made myself a little jig here. Um, basically, let me unscrew it here. It's kind of a hodgepodge, but you know, you gotta work with what you got, and here's what I got. I got a long eye bolt um, with some washers down here and up here. 
and I've got it setting in my vise, okay? So I've got this screwed down so that it's snug. So now I can unscrew these three bolts or three nuts and that'll hold everything in place and I can just slowly loosen up this nut with a wrench and let everything walk itself up. So some things you wanna be aware of here, right? So I mark where um, on this uh, pillar here versus where the bolt hole is on the um, on this part here to make sure that it goes back together the same way. Also note here, my secondary spring is in the center location here. You can see that there's uh, five locations. It's in the center location here. That way I make sure it, it goes back together the way it was. So I'm gonna go ahead and start loosening up my bolts or my nuts here and then we will work everything apart you can see already things started to shift so my nuts are loose so I'll go ahead and take those off and set them off to the side in a safe place so now I'm gonna go ahead and take a wrench here and start loosening this up now the uh, this does like to bind up on the threads here of the of the stud sticking out there. So you can see it's actually coming up pretty nice this time. So, so usually you just give it a little bit of a little bit of persuasion. Actually, if you take a dead blow and lightly tap on it, sometimes that works too. So let's go ahead and try that. So we're almost up to where we need to be. Um, sometimes too, if you take it and just give it a little bit of a half twist. Yep, there we go. Now we're back. Now we're up. Where did my wrench go? There it is. There we go. It's coming up. Okay, now we're no longer there. Yeah, there we go. You see it twisted on me here too. So you can see it twisted counterclockwise. So we want to make sure when we put everything back together, we twist it over so that it goes together in the same spot. Okay, so let's finish um, loosening this up. And we're almost all the way at the top right now, so lost all of our tension here. Okay, so now we can remove our washers and everything and set those off to the side. And this old bearing I'm using as a spacer. Then take our cap off here. And, I mean, you can pretty much leave the secondary spring in there. That's probably fine. But, all right, so some things we're going to look at here, right? So we want to make sure that our rollers don't have any flat spots and don't have any excessive jiggle in there. Now, these were all brand new last year, so I'm not too worried about them. But um, that all looks good. They're all rolling nicely. They don't really seem to have any flat spots or anything. Um, we'll go ahead and clean this up with some carb clean just to get all the all the excess, um, you know, belt belt debris off of there but um, that looks in good shape okay now we can go ahead and separate our secondary it doesn't hurt to take the spring out and set it off to the side but now we come apart here okay so what we're in okay keep in mind there are shims in here spacers so make sure you keep those in there uh, or keep track of them so that they go back in where they were um, so i'm going to go ahead and remove those right now and set those off to the side as well okay so what we need to do so we need to check the diameter of this, oops, of this shaft right here versus the inner diameter of this bushing here. Um, I'm going to pull the manual and show you where it, it shows it in the manual, but there's a spec involved here where you're supposed to have X amount of clearance between this bushing and the shaft there. If the, if the clearance gets too much, you need to replace this bush, bushing, which is pretty easy to do. But again, this was brand new last year, so it should be in good shape, but we're going to go ahead and check it just to make sure. Okay, stay tuned, and I'll get us set up for that. Well, unfortunately, my manual is actually on my phone, and I'm recording on my phone, so I can't show you the picture right now of um, what it says in the manual. But basically, it's going to be on page 452 of my um, ZR800 shop manual from 2002, and it's going to be in section 8-13, where it talks about measuring the clearance between the outside of this shaft and the inside of this uh, bushing here, Okay. Um, I'm going to try to insert a screenshot here, so we'll see if that works, so we'll pause. For that. Okay, screenshot should be inserted. 
um, when you guys actually watch this video. But basically what we have to do is you're supposed to use a micrometer for this, but I don't have one. I've got a caliper. So you got to work with what you got, and i got a caliper. So basically I'm going to measure the OD here using my caliper, okay? I'm going to do it off camera just so I get the measurement right. It's going to be hard to do on camera using uh, you know, the camera and, and one hand. So get that measurement here, write it down. Then I'm going to go over here to my um, to my bushing here, and I'm going to use one of these bore gauges. Okay, so basically how these work is these are spring loaded. So you whoop, they come in a variety of sizes from Harbor Freight like this, depending on which size you're measuring. But basically, I get that in there, and then um, again hard to do off hand off camera. Turn this little little dial here and it'll lock it in place so once that lock once that's locked in place i'll pull it out and i'll measure across here with my caliper um, to see what that measurement is i'll write that down then i'll subtract my this measurement from this measurement okay and see what i have left now according to the manual we should have no more than twenty thousandths clearance between this id and this od Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and take my measurements, write them down so you can see what they are, and we'll see where we're at. So uh, stay tuned, and I'll bring you back. All right, here's where we're at. So I took a couple measurements. So um, I went ahead and I measured in multiple locations around here and, and checked, and the largest ID I could find was 1.503. I did the same thing around here and looked for the smallest dimension, um, and I got 1.498. So by looking for the largest and the smallest, that gives you your absolute maximum clearance that you're going to see as this thing is rotating. So doing the math there, we've actually got only 5,000s clearance. So that's good. That means our, our bushing is in good shape and our shaft is in good shape. So we have no worries about our clearance there. So that should get us through the year and then some. So, um, okay, that's good. Um, okay, another thing. While you have this apart, it's a good idea to take either a scotch bright or um, some really high grit sandpaper, like maybe a 2000 grit, something like that, and wet sand this surface just to get off any sort of um, ridges and things like that. And you can see there's all these marks here. That's actually from the belt um, as it's been sitting over the summer. A lot of guys actually take their belts off the pulleys. I left it on this time, but um, here's what happens when you do that. You get, you get like dimples in there or uh, marks on there. That's not actually in the metal. It's just um, leftover, you know, belt residue and things like that. So it is a good idea to take that belt off in the off season, but I didn't. So I just went ahead and I cleaned that up and I smoothed it out as good as I can um, on both sides there. So that's all good. Make sure to clean off, clean off your shaft really good, get all the residue off of there and make sure you get all the residue off of the inside of your bushing there to make sure everything slides as it's supposed to. So now we're actually ready for reassembly. So let's go ahead and I'll set you back up on the, uh, on the tripod and I'll show you how to reassemble. So stay tuned. I was actually getting a little bit ahead of myself here. Um, there is another set of bushings in here and another shaft you need to measure. So on, the, on this front part here, I forget the actual name of this part. Uh, somebody please tell me what it's called. But anyways, um, same bushing on that side. It's the same size, but you need to check it to make sure that this clearance is okay too. Um, and also on this part of the shaft as well. So I went ahead and I did that off camera, show you my measurements. I, I, I got a 1.503 for the bushing and I got a 1.499 as the smallest on that shaft there. So again, I, I did the biggest size I could find on here and the smallest one I could find over there. So that gives us 4,000s clearance. So we're in good shape. All right, now we'll get you back over there and I'll show you how to reassemble. So give me one moment. All right, now we're ready for reassembly. Okay, so I've got us back in the, uh, set on the vise here with the uh, dot facing you so you can see everything. I put black on there too, just because the yellow is starting to wear out. All right, so it does matter which position this goes in, because you can see it can be clocked various ways. So when I took it apart, the dot here, or the um, the hole here where the spring locks into was closest to that tower. So I'm gonna put it back together that same way. Easier said than done. There we go, okay. So that hole is right here. Here's my, here's my yellow. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and get my shims back on there. Don't forget your shims. Uh, I'm going to take my spring, lock it back in that hole there, okay? I am going to lightly, 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 nope, I don't have the shaft all the way in. There we go, now we're dropped in all the way, okay. So I'm going to lightly, lightly, lightly turn the vise on that shaft there. You don't want to go too tight so you don't want to gall it up because that is where that has to slide in and out of um, when you're, when you're, Clutch is moving. Okay, so yep. 
There we go. Okay, now, shims are on, spring is on. Now, which way do we clock our top part? So remember I said the spring has to go in the top hole, so that puts us right over here, right? So that makes sense because here's my dot and here's my dot. And when I let that loose, remember I said it, it turned counterclockwise, so now as I tighten it down, it's gonna wanna go clockwise, so that'll put our dot here, right here, once we're, once we're tightened down, okay? Hopefully that's all making sense as I'm talking through it. So let's go ahead and get some of our, helps to get it a little bit lined up first here. Um, yeah, all right, so now let's go ahead and get our stack of washers on here and our nut. Okay. As we tighten this down, that spring is going to compress and it's actually going to want to walk this way anyways, so it's kind of helping us out here. Alright, so that's too tight to do by hand, so now we're going to go ahead and get our... Yep, there we go. Oop, I went a little bit too far. So now I can torque it over, get our holes lined up. There we go. And you can see my studs are poking through there. Get it down as far as I can go. Now I can put my nuts back on. Go ahead and get our nuts back on. Whoop. All right, so they're on. Now we'll go ahead and we will get that torqued down. sitting there, give her a couple more ooga -dugas. Okay, now I can take our nut off here. And our secondary should be about ready. All right, we should be good. Now you do want to just double check your shaft here to make sure I didn't gall it up. If you did, you can take some, whoop, supplies are done. You can take some sandpaper and um, smooth that out, but um, we're in good shape here. So our secondary is ready to go. Now we want to take a look at our primary. So let's uh, hop over to the sled there and we will take a look at that primary. One second. All right, things to look at for the primary. Well, first of all, um, I think the engine's pretty healthy, but you want to, you want to give her a little Give her a little pull here up and down and side to side and front and back just to make sure we don't have any play in our in our crankshaft there. So make sure our end play is still good. So I've got like zero movement, so I'm not worried about that at all. Um, next thing to look at. You want to take your um, high grit sandpaper or a scotch bite or something and clean up your surface, your sheaves here, just like you did um, on the other side there. Now, we also want to take a look to make sure our, whoop, show you guys, our weights in here are in good shape. Um, hard to explain, but I made kind of a hybrid weight system in here, but you can see there's spacers on either side there. So you want to make sure that that, that your, um, weight is still riding in the middle there on that roller. So that looks good. Um, go ahead and turn it over. Look at the next one. Make sure that nothing's stuck in there. Those are moving back and forth as they should. And we'll go ahead and we'll look at the third one. Yeah, that actually all looks pretty good. Um, everything's moving as it should, nothing's stuck there. So um, it's a good idea too to take that, take your brake clean and spray down the inside of here too to get all the residue out of there just to make sure your weights are you know, frop, flopping freely as they're supposed to. So not really worried about that. So I'm gonna go ahead and get all this cleaned up and then we'll pop our secondary back in um, and I'll bring you back once we're doing that. So stay tuned. All right, my primary is all cleaned up. Now it's time to wrestle that secondary back in. So um, we have a steel shaft and we have an aluminum housing on there. So you want to put something on there to lubricate it, right? So that it doesn't get, get secured on there. Um, if you put like grease and things like that on there, it tends to collect 
residue from the belt as it's spinning around. So I haven't tried this before, but I'm, what I'm gonna try is some Teflon spray just to see how that works. Uh, Cause it dries on dry um, once you spray it on there. It goes on dry. And I don't know, we'll see how that works. See if I have any have any luck with that. Cause you want something on there so that you don't have that aluminum, um, whoops, don't have that aluminum stick or corrode to the steel on there, right? So try to spray a little bit on that and we'll spray a little bit on the uh, inside of here. All right, so now that part I was talking about earlier, having the, uh, the uh, keyway up, that's what makes this a lot easier, right? So I can have my keyway up, don't have to worry about holding it in place and it'll be easier to line up my slot with it. So this is a little bit of a wrestling match, but normally it's not too bad. Um, this housing does move a little bit. Just really just have to push back. There we go. Look at that. Wiggle, 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 wiggle. Boom, it's on. All right. So there is a, a uh, spacer that needs to go in here. I'm going to put some Teflon on that as well. There we go. And then um, I actually didn't do this yet. I'm going to go ahead and clean up my threads on my bolt and I'll bring you right back. One second. All right, there we go. I just hit it with the wire wheel to get, get that cleaned up. So now I'm gonna go, go ahead and actually hit that one a little bit of Teflon as well, just to make sure. Careful not to spray the Teflon like on your, your surfaces here because you don't want that, that's not desirable. Make sure that your uh, washers and stuff are still on there. Go ahead, screw that in there. Yeah, that's actually screwed in a lot easier now than when it came out. Get that all the way in there. And make sure to tighten it down. Make it good and snug. Don't over tighten because that is a long bolt. You don't want to snap that off. But there we go. I think we are in good shape. A little bit tighter. There we go. All right. Good shape there. Okay. Cool. That's where, where it should be. Now we can go ahead and pop our belt back on. So this is a genuine Articat belt. So you want the era to be pointing forward that way. That's the direction of rotation, okay? So we'll go ahead and we'll wrestle it around our primary. There you go. Get it up here, our secondary. Boom, done. Close our lid now. Okay. All right, well, that's a good, for, a good start here. Now I think it's time for lunch, and I'll bring you back after lunch to show you what we're going to do in the rest of it. So stay tuned. Well, I was sitting there eating lunch, and I realized I was getting ahead of myself again, so we never actually pulled off our primary to check that out. I know I showed you all the all this stuff here, but we're gonna pull it out because there are some bushings in there that need to be checked out as well. So I took my belt back off and I'm gonna show you how to get that primary out here. So things you're gonna need, um, some sort of a little pick or a screwdriver, because there's a trap door right here you need to take off. So I like to use a pick. It usually comes off pretty easy just like that. Uh, you're going to need a, what is that, a 13 millimeter 12-point um, socket because the bolt in here, I'll show you once it, once I get it out here, but um, it needs a 12 point socket. Then you're, well, let's, let's, get, let's get to that first here. Um, you're also gonna need some sort of a bar. So I like to just take a pry bar and put it between the, the, the towers here to wedge it so that it doesn't turn as I'm loosening that up. So we'll go ahead and just pop there. You see it wants to roll on you because that bolt is pretty tight. So you're turning the engine over. So you need to block it up so that you can't uh, so the clutch can't turn. So I'm going to go ahead and pop that loose. There we go. Get that out of there. I'll show you what that bolt looks like once it comes out. You're, you are obviously going to need some sort of an extension here too. So I've got a six inch extension. So that helps you out. Come on. 
So there's threads in there, and I'll show you what that's for in a minute, but it gets hung up on the way out. All right, so you see it's got, you know, it's, you need a 12, this is why you need a 12-point socket. That's the way it's, uh, that's the way it's shaped. Don't lose your lock washer in there. Okay, now, unlike the secondary, um, where it, there's a keyway in there, the primary is on a tapered shaft. So in order to get that bad boy off, you're going to need a puller. So um, here's what your puller looks like. I can put the, the part numbers um, in the description, but basically you have to know what kind of clutch you have. So I know my clutch isn't original because I replaced it. The original clutches on these are a nine tower clutch and they are known for um, spider webbing and breaking um, inside here. So I went ahead and I replaced mine a couple years ago um, with a six tower clutch, okay? So your original clutch is gonna use a puller that has um, SAE threads on it, where the new one, newer clutches, 2010 and newer, use a metric puller. So you have to know which, which kind you have. So if you have the newer style on there, the um, original puller is going to feel like it wants to thread on there, but then it'll, it'll bind up on itself because the thread pitch is really close, but don't try to force that because you'll kill your threads. So I've got myself here the, uh, the new style puller. So I, again, I'll put the part numbers in there for both pullers so that you know which is which. But um, basically here, here's how this works. There's some threads further up in here that the puller thread into, threads into. I'm going to get it down there as tight as you can. Or get it in, put it in by hand until it's tight just to make sure you don't have any binding. And then we're going to try to do this with um, a socket here and, and see if it will pop loose. But um, again, keep your uh, bar some sort of a bar in there to keep your clutch wet because it's going to want to turn on you. And for this, you're going to need a 19 millimeter socket. Okay, so that's what I've got here. All right, so let's give this a try. See if we can get it to pop. Whoop, the bar popped. She's snug. Oh, there it went. Yeah, see, that was pretty violent, but you see she popped right out. Wow. There's a lot of tension on there. Okay. We'll go ahead and unscrew our puller. I know it sounded like I broke something, but I didn't break anything. We're good. Get our out of there and then this is going to be a little tight here so here we go we're free and that's that all right so you can see down in here here's our crankshaft now is a good idea to take a look at your your seal around there to make sure that it's in good shape um you know look for signs of leakage so like you'll see uh like oil leaking around there if it's got um leakage from the crankcase pressure pushing it out but this looks dry as can be, so my crank seal still my crank seal is still in good shape. All right, let's get our puller up on the bench, or our, I'm sorry, our clutch up on the bench, and I'll bring you back once we're up there. Stay tuned. All right, so it's time to disassemble the clutch. Um, we're gonna take off this top plate. Now, this is under spring tension, but not nearly as much as the secondary. So you can do this without having something, you know, holding it together like I previously showed you on the secondary. Um, for this six tower clutch, we're going to need a hide and seek champion of the world to get that off. So our, our 10 millimeter. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to take off every other one. Um, and then um, I'm going to work on slowly loosening up all the other ones so that uh, we don't, you know, so that it comes up evenly. Okay. Um, something to note. You do want this cover to go back on the clutch in the same orientation as it was before. So I don't know if you can see this or not, but I went ahead and I peened here, 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 and here and put a little black dot on there so I know exactly where this goes, okay? Um, these are balanced, timed, so you want these to go back together the way that they, they were, all right? So let's go ahead and remove half of our bolts. So we do have a, it's a long bolt and a washer on there, so make sure you keep your washers together. Um, okay, 
two and three. These are lock washers, by the way, not just regular washers. Okay, so now we're gonna try to slowly open these up. I'm gonna turn my impact down to a lower speed. Okay. You can see it's slowly starting to come up. And we're just about there. There we go. Perfect. See, again, it's under spring tension, but not nearly as much as the uh, secondary was. So to get it down, you just have to, you know, push it back down. All right, so let's go ahead and get the rest of our bolts out of here. Collect, making sure we collect our washers, or lock washers, that is. All right. This is a good time to take a look at your primary spring to make sure that it's not cracked, broken, or anything like that. This one is getting a little bit of age on it, but still has life left, so I think we're okay. All right, put that off to the side. Now, this also, the, the spring doesn't have a clocking like on the secondary either, so you don't have to worry about that. The spring just goes in, sits down here in that notch, and goes on the top up here in this notch, and that's pretty much it. All right, um... Give me a minute and I will bring you right back. One second. All right, so the very first thing that I did is I took an entire can of brake clean and I sprayed this whole thing down. You get a lot of buildup from uh, belt dust in here, so you want to make sure that it's all cleaned out. So um, I went and sprayed the, down the cover both sides inside here and all inside of my clutch here to get every bit of debris that I could out of there. All right, so first thing we're going to do, we've got a bushing in here. And you've got the shaft here, right? So the cover rides up and down in that bushing. So just check it for excessive play, for starters. Doesn't really feel like there's much there. I mean, it moves a little bit, but there is a spec here. So just like I showed you on the secondary, we have to measure our shaft here, and we have to measure our um, the inside of the bushing here, and we can have no more than 8 thousandths clear, er, uh, clearance there. So we want it to be pretty tight. So I'm going to take my bore gauge, same as I did before, put it in here, get a measurement, and then take my caliper on the outside here and get a measurement. All right, so stay tuned, and I'll bring you back with what that is. All right, so here's your measurement, our measurements here. So here's what my bushing measured, and here's what my shaft measured. When you subtract it, I have four and a half thou, so that means my bushing is still good. All right, I'm going to set you back up on the tripod here, and I'll uh, show you what, what else we're going to take a look at here. So stay tuned. Okay, so this actually does disassemble. I don't have the right equipment to do that, so I actually can't disassemble it. I'll have to see if one of these days I can maybe make something, but I can't do it. So there is a nut on here, and there's a special holder that goes on here for you to be able to take this spider off. That way you can completely disassemble this whole thing, but I don't have the right stuff to do it. So some other things to check here. Um, you know, our, our movable sheave here, make sure that we don't have any excessive play in there, which I don't feel like we do. Typically, if that's going to be worn, or I mean, sorry, if this is worn out, then that's going to be worn out. So, um, you know, they slide pretty evenly, so I wouldn't expect there to be much issue there. You also do want to take a look at this uh, bushing here, too, just to make sure that there's, um, you know, no, no galling in there, no cracks, you know, nothing going on there. So it all looks pretty good and shiny there, so not worried about that cover. Um, movable sheave is pretty good there. Another thing to, to take a look at here, too, is excessive wobble between where your spider fits in here on your towers. I'm not getting very much there, so that's also a good thing. Um, what else here? So it's also a good idea to take a look inside here, and I'm not gonna be able to show you very well, but your weight flips up 
here when your you know clutch is engaging and it's supposed to ride straight here right um so you want to look up in this cavity here and make sure you don't have any excessive excessive wear on the sides because that means that your weight is wobbling back and forth and it's probably wearing out um so i don't have any of that going on here another thing to check this wheel up here i'm going to actually grab a little pick to try to show you a little bit easier too so there are spacers on either side of that little roller there that's what the you know the clutch or the uh weight rides on um, you don't want excessive mov movement there. Now there's not a spec for that either, so I can't actually measure it. It's just kind of a judgment call, but I'm not getting very much movement at all here, so that's good. Um, the other thing to check is your weight itself. Now, I mentioned before that I have kind of a, a hybrid system going on here. So there's different kinds of bolts here. here. So there's some, there's some weights that are fixed to the bolt so that the bolt doesn't pivot, the bolt pivots with the weight. Um, and then there's also weights that have a bushing in there. Well, long story short, I made a hybrid system when I got this new clutch um, because I didn't really want to pay for new weights and things like that, so I got it to work with how I could. So I found some spacers that fit in between here um, properly so that I don't get excessive movement. And um, I don't have a bushing in the weight there. So this weight will wear out and we're get, starting to get to that point, but I'm still in decent shape. I don't have a ton of wiggle here. If you grab the weight like on this end and wiggle it back and forth, I can try to show you here. I don't have much wiggle there. So my, that means my weight's not gonna be slapping into the sides of the spider here. So that's good. But that's something to watch out for too. If you do see any wear inside your spider there like that, you're going to want to either replace the bushing in your weight or replace your, your bolts here that the, uh, that the weight rides on, depending on the type that you have. So um, I think that's about it for now. Like I said, the right thing to do is to be able to take this whole spider apart, um, and you can replace parts inside that spider if things are you know, excessively wearing here. But I, this clutch isn't that old, so I don't have a ton of wear yet. But um, next year I may need to think about replacing these weights here. Um, but for now, I think we're in pretty good shape. Okay, so now it's time to put everything back together. Okay, so um, I'm, you know, also to, you know, pick up, make sure that your, your sheaves slide nice and easily, they don't stick. I did a good job of cleaning out in here to make sure that there's no, you know, debris left over. So I think my clutch is in pretty good shape here. All right, so now let's go ahead and get this bad boy back together. So again, spring doesn't matter which way it goes, just set her back in there. Um, Let's see if I can find my, my my marks here. There we go. Okay, there's all my peen marks. Um, I did also put a peen mark in the spider too, so someday I will take this apart, but not today. Um, so there's my marks. Let's see here. Here's my peen marks on my cover. So we're gonna go ahead and get our spring in the groove. And this is gonna be a little bit of a wrestling match, so just have your uh, your bolts handy here. I'm going to start with just putting every other one in there, kind of like I did before when I took it apart. And that way I can get ready to screw this thing in once I push it down. All right, so push down. Actually, it's going to help if I have my impact right here. I'm going to set it on low and slow so that I don't cross thread. And we're going to try to see if we can wrestle this here. It's going to be tough to do on camera here. In front of you guys, but we're gonna give it our best shot. Hopefully we can do it. Hmm. <clears throat> Told you it was gonna be a wrestling match. Okay, we're almost there. <clears throat> oh, so close. I think what I'm going to do is slide these up a little bit. Well, nope, that's not going to work either. Just a matter of getting things lined up the way you want them to go. Oh, we're there. I had it in. Couldn't get it down. Tell you what, I'm gonna slide this closer to the edge of the bench here and we'll we'll try this again one second. <laughs> Sorry about that, forgot to turn the camera back on, but I got it. Um got myself a little bit more leverage here. So now we're just gonna creep it down just like we creeped it up, just go a little bit of a little turn on each one.
Having it on low here too is kind of helping, so it's kind of a good indicator when you're starting to get a bind. Um, once it starts ratcheting or you know impacting, that means you got a little bit of a bind. So go ahead and you know rotate to the next next bolt there. Okay, we're actually uh, all the way down now. Let's go ahead and get the rest of our bolts in there. Should be in good shape now. Yeah, make sure they, they thread in nice and easy so you're not cross-threading things. Cross-threading things. So, yeah, I think we are getting there. All right, let's get those in. All right, um, I'm actually going to go ahead and grab a ratchet here and do this by hand, do it by feel. And you want to do it evenly. And I'm going to do it in a cross pattern, kind of like you would with a, with a car tire. Like that. Whoops. I don't have the torque setting spec for these, but I know there is a torque spec. I just can't, can't find it at the moment here. Okay, I think we're good. Now we can go ahead and put our clutch back on the machine. So I'll take you over there and uh, we'll be right back. All right, let's see if we can wrestle this bad boy back in here. Turn on our lights so you guys can see what's going on. It's usually not too bad. Kick the tripod there. Yep, you guys can still see, okay. Usually not too bad getting in here, but um, this is a little bit of a wrestling match, but yep, there we go, she's back in there. Oh, forgot to mention. It's not a bad idea to put just a scotch of anti-seize on that shaft in there so that it doesn't seize itself to the to the um to the uh crankshaft coming out. So I put a light coating in there and just you know smeared it on really good and um just gives you a little, makes it a little bit easier to, for taking this apart next time. Okay, so we've got our clutch all the way up in there. Time to put our clutch bolt back in. Now be careful, it does like to get bound up a little bit on the threads where the puller engages before it gets its way through. Yeah, see I'm binding up a little bit. Just work, take your time, work it in there by hand and you'll, you'll get past it. And then you can push it all the way in. See, to where it's supposed to go. Alright, so now I'm going to take my 13 milli, um, work it in by hand this way first until she's tight, and then we'll give her the old crank -a see what happens. I like to do this by hand just to make sure that um, I know nothing's binding up in there. It goes in nice and smooth. Because the last thing you want to do is to booger up your crankshaft in there. So that's what we're going to do. Okay. We're to the point now where we're rotating the engine over. So now we're going to go ahead and put our bar to our tower there. And get it wedged in there. And... Tighten this bad boy up now. Don't over tighten this because you can crack these or you can shear that bolt off, but you do want to get it pretty damn snug because you know that's your that's what's holding your clutch on. But it's tapered, you know, so I, I've I've driven it up there pretty good. So just give her a little bit of a little bit more. We should be good to go. Okay. Now uh, we can go ahead and get all of our tools out of the way. Put our little cover back on here. Now we can put our belt back on for the last time. Okay, so we're gonna, again, we've got these arrows on here. Arrows point forward in the direction to drive. Um, another thing to think about here too is, there's that triangle there, the triangle points towards the engine. So make sure you get that on there the right way. Put it on the primary first. Then work your way back to the secondary. Roll that clutch over a little bit. We're 
just about there. Got to go a little bit more. Whoop. Oh, come on. Of course, it never goes easy on camera. Had this off 10 times. It goes nice and easy every other time. There we go, we're on. Okay, whoo! Sorry about that, a little bit of a wrestling match, so that's good. Might as well go ahead and flip our cover closed. It's also a good idea to, too, idea too, to inspect your belt, make sure there's no cracks, no lugs missing, you know, things like that. This was a newer belt towards the end of last year, so um, it's in pretty good shape, but go ahead and put our cover back on. All right, now it's time to move on to the next step. So I'll bring you back once we're uh, doing that. So really the next thing I'm going to address is my power valves and cleaning those, but first I'm actually going to drain my chain case um, and I'll let that drain out while I'm working on my power valves there. So um, here's my dipstick down here. I'm going to go ahead and remove that just to let that drain out or aid in letting that drain out. Take a look at my dipstick and you can see there we are, we are full. So I'm going to go ahead and set that off to the side and under, if you look right down there underneath the sled under here and around the the bottom of the uh, the tunnel there you're going to feel a a, a bolt and that's going to be a 7 16 so i'm going to reach under there and loosen that bolt up let it out and let the uh let the chain case oil accumulate in that pan there so i'm going to go ahead and do that off camera you're not going to be able to see what i'm doing anyway so I'm going to pop that baby loose and let her start draining, then I'll get on to the step on the power valves there, so stay tuned. Alright, now let's get to work on our power valves since our, our chain case is draining out here. So, here's where the power valves are located in case you don't know. Um, these need to be opened up and cleaned out periodically just to make sure that they're not gummed up and working properly. They get a lot of um, soot and oil residue built up that kind of burns on there. You'll see once I pull them out there, but I typically clean mine every year just to make sure that things are running the way they're supposed to be running. So what you need to do is take off these four bolts. Um, that's going to be your 10 millimeter, your hide and seek, cha hide and seek champion of the world. So let's pop those off. I'm just going to pop off all eight of them while I'm doing this here. They're all the same, so it doesn't really matter. You can't really mix them up. I'm gonna grab a magnet parts over here. Set that right here. There we go. All right. Okay. So now you do want to be careful. There is a gasket in here, and if I'm lucky, I'm not going to ruin them. So this one, I got lucky, it, it came right off. This one, I can see, I might need to, I'm going to grab a razor blade and see if I can peel that off without ruining it. <clears throat> All right, let's see here. That one did rip in the middle there, but we might be okay. All right. So now don't go horsing on these. Don't don't yank these out because that this cable there's a cable in there. It runs all the way up here, and we'll address that in a minute there. But you can wreck that cable. So what you're going to do is just kind of tilt that off to the side there. Um, you can see this power valve is a little gummy actually. So it's a good thing I'm opening this up. All right. Um, I got to grab my Allen head here, and I'll be right back, and I'll show you how to open that up. One second. All right. So I've got my Allen head. So there are two five millimeter Allen head, I guess they're called cap head screws in there. One here, one here, one here, one here, okay? That's what's holding your power valves in place. So now those tend to get really tight, <coughs> excuse me. So I have stripped these out before even using an impact, uh, impact, you know, driver like this. So what, I'm gonna, what I've been doing lately is using my impact here. Um, for those of you that haven't seen this, basically, um, you uh, get your Allen head in place there and you whack on this. And as you whack, it shocks the threads 
and it turns it just ever so slightly to help break loose really stubborn bolts so you don't snap them off or strip them out. So we're going to go ahead and try that on these here. And it, I've had good luck, so hopefully this works here. There we go, that one came loose. All right, let's try the next one. That one came loose. Look at that, they're working good. Like I said, I have stripped these out before, so you don't want to do that because you're in for a bad time. The only way to get those out really is with a with an extractor, and uh, it's not easy to get in there. Loose, all right, let's get the last one loose. Look at that, worked like a charm. All right, we can go ahead and pull all four of those out. No washers or anything, just these uh, just these cap head screws in there. Don't drop these because you're gonna have a bad time when they go down in your engine there. Okay, now we should be able to slide our power valves out. There we go. It's not just too bad, um, but you can see there is quite a bit of buildup of stuff on here. So I'm going to go ahead and take some brake clean and clean those off really good. And I'm going to show you a before and after on that one versus that one. So uh, stay tuned while I do that. You don't need to see me clean. All right, well, we got our first side pretty well cleaned up. So you can take a look here. Um, you want to make sure you know you you clean. There's a lot of carbon deposits that build up along these these nubs here, and along all kinds of stuff here. So take a razor blade, really scrape that off, and do do a good job of cleaning it out with um with your carb clean or brake clean or whatever you choose to use. Um, you can take this uh, bolt out here and take the whole thing off and put it in ultrasound to cleaner if you have that sort of thing, but it's not usually necessary unless it gets you know too caked up. That's why you do this every year so it doesn't get too bad. Make sure to clean out in here. And make sure to clean out in here too. Now try not to spray directly down the middle there because that goes right into your cylinder. But try to spray around the edges here and you know try to get most of that gunk out. So here's your here's the one side. I don't know if you can see that. Like look down in the holes there where they where they go in the jugs. You can see how dirty the one side is compared to the other. And here's your um, before and after. You can see there's a lot of buildup on this one as compared to this one. So try to make this one look the same way. Now. When you're putting these together, there is a right way and a wrong way. So this guy spins all the way around. You're going to be able to see inside the housing there which way this one goes, but this one does have a, more of a dished side. Um, so make sure the dished side goes down, okay? So it's going to go in, I believe, like that. I have to double check inside there. Yep. So hold on here. Yeah, see, I've actually got this one upside down at the moment, but... Um, Goes like this. The part where the ears are on the bottom side go down. And then again, that dish side goes down as you slide everything back in there. So I'm gonna go ahead and get the whoop. Gonna go ahead and get the first side assembled. Get the second side cleaned up, and I'll bring you back um, for the next step. So stay tuned. Here, I'll just show you this quick. Um, this power valve now slides in really nice and easy on this one, as compared to before, where it's a little bit gummy. So that means she's nice and clean. Also. Um, when you're torquing down these uh, these cap head screws, um, make them pretty snug. Some guys say you're supposed to use Loctite in there. I never have, and I believe there was Loctite in there originally, and those are the ones that stripped out on me. So um, even without Loctite, those, for me, have stayed very, very tight um, to the point where I do have a hard time getting them back out. So I don't put Loctite on mine, so you know, do as you may. But um, anyways, I'm going to go ahead and get the rest of this uh, cleaned up and buttoned back up, and I'll bring you back. All right, we're all buttoned up there and everything's moving a lot better than it did before, so that'll be good. Next step, now we need to adjust our power valve cables to make sure they're at the proper length. So if you follow your cables coming out of the end of your power valve here, it goes up to this little box here. So there's a servo motor in there that um, 
activates when you hit a certain RPM to open up your power valves, okay? So you've got to take off that bolt and that bolt. So those are also your hide and seek champion of the world, those 10 millimeters. So you're going to take those off. That cover comes off and your servo is right there. So I'm going to pop that cover off and show you what that looks like. Well, guys, here's where we do our regular maintenance. So upon removing the cover, I immediately noticed a problem. These are not supposed to be up here. These are supposed to be, um, there's actually a little keeper here that holds those down here onto the housing. And as you can see down here, that's cracked off. So this must have broke off sometime uh, towards the end of my season last year and uh, it's causing me some issues. Um, so I'm gonna have to go ahead and address that. I'm probably gonna wind up having to get a whole new uh, housing here. I can see if I can maybe just get the cover or something like that, but um, I can still adjust my valve, my cables here. So basically what you have to do is pick up on this push out and it slides out on that slot there so pick up push out like that and there now they're both out so they're both free so when I mentioned adjusting the uh, cables the length from here to here um, there's a spec in the manual which I'll pull up in a second here but um, you need to adjust those because these cables stretch over time and um, you want them to both be within a certain spec and you want them to be identical. So I'm going to show you how to do that in a, in a moment here, but in the meantime, I'm actually going to look up this part number and see what I can do to get this thing replaced. So uh, stay tuned and I'll bring you back. Well, as it turns out, I know a guy who knows a guy who has this part here and um, he'll give it to me for 40 bucks. So I'm going to go ahead and go that route. Checked online and um, you can get them, but they're like 325 bucks, brand new. So I'm going to try the used route. Um, make sure, and you know, try, try that. Hopefully that, that works out for him. But anyways, let's go ahead and talk about how we measure these cables. So like I said, these cables can stretch and they're supposed to be within a certain um, size range. So you need to measure from this surface here to the bottom of that surface there. So that, that tells you that cable length when you pull... Uh, put slight tension on it. So it needs to be between 1.17 inches and 1.24 inches, okay? So that is kind of a pain in the butt to measure this. I've done it, tried doing it with a caliper and different things like that. So what I wound up doing is making myself a little jig here. So I don't know if I can do this with one hand or not, but we'll give her a shot. So basically, well, you can see I have a scribed line on there and I cut a notch in here, right, with my crude tools that I have. Well, here, let me go ahead and get it set up off camera and I'll bring you back. All right, so I made myself this little jig here, like I was telling you. So basically, you slide the uh, the cable in the top like that. Um, where the cable exits the sheath right here, that bottom surface. If you measure over that line, I'm at 1.20 inches, which is about halfway um, in between our tolerance there. So then you can take your cable. I can't do it um, on camera here, but I can, when you grab a hold of this and take the slop out of it, um, and you eyeball over that line, the bottom surface here would be at 1.20 inches. So that's how I have accomplished doing this the last couple of years here. So um, it's been pretty good. Um, so I'm gonna go ahead and do that again here. So I'm gonna go ahead and take the tension out, see where I'm at there. If I'm too long or too short, I can go ahead and adjust it down here. There's, um, there's a jam nut, and then you can screw it in or out to adjust that cable length. So I'm gonna go ahead and check both cables and adjust as needed, and I will bring you back once I'm done. All right, well, I measured my cables, and they're actually both spot on, so I'm pretty happy with the way those are. So I obviously can't reassemble things until I get uh, this sorted out here, but um, I've already contacted the guy, so we'll see if we can get the part in. But next, we can uh, refill our chain case. But first off, what I like to do is, you know, I dump it in a clear container, and I, I try to look around in there and look for particulate. And then I take a strong magnet, and I put it on the bottom. It's going to be hard to show you here, but um, to see if any of that particulate actually... Um, attracts to the magnet and nothing seems to be doing that so our chain case is probably still in good shape I did have the chain case opened up last winter too just to take a look in there and everything looked good there but um, this is just more you know proof that everything's still running good there so basically let's see if I can get you set up over here whoop um, so basically the fill plug is right here okay so 
We need to take out the, um, I believe that is also a 7 16 take out that plug, and then just top that off with, uh, I'll have to look up the number, but I believe it's um, 9 ounces of uh, chain case loop. So uh, let me uh, go ahead and get set up, and we will get that done. So one second. All right, I've got my drain plug put back in, um, and I've got my dipstick put back in. I pulled out my plug. It's going to actually be easier if I remove my exhaust here. So um, I usually just take a pick like this, grab a hold of my spring. Now it comes off really easy. Set that to the side, do the same thing up here. There we go. Fumble with your stuff. You know what? I should probably just take it off the front there, too. There we go. Set those off to the side. Two. There we go. All right, now I can remove my exhaust. There's a spring that goes around here too um, that I was able to take off. I'm just gonna slide that over there to get it out of the way. All right, now um, I'm using some Amsoil chain keys, gear oil in here. Um, I did look it up, it takes nine ounces, so we're gonna put this is a 16 ounce bottle, so we're gonna put half the bottle in. You can see over here. So um, I'm gonna take a small funnel. Like so. Get it lined up as best I can there. And we're gonna pour in half the bottle and then see where we're at. Sorry, just getting the bottle open here. All right, let me go. Hold that tight, because it's not the best fit there. That looks to be about four ounces. And that's six. And that looks to be almost eight. All right, that should be eight ounces. Just kind of let that drain down a second. Give her a little drainage, and then we'll go ahead and we pull our dipstick to see where we're at. Okay. And hopefully you can see that, but that says we're full. All right, that's good. I'll go ahead and put my dipstick back in, put my plug back in, and put my exhaust back on. Then we'll move on to the next step. All right, next thing we're going to tackle is uh, removing our old slides. So um, I've made this easy on myself, and I've um, lifted up the rear end of the sled on my overhead winch here. Um, I put this in, I think, last, last spring. It's been useful for stuff like this, so I'll put a link right up whoop, there. To that video if you want to see how i installed that but anyways lift the back end of the sled up off the ground so the track is able to rotate free um now right here you'll see there is a bolt that's holding the front of the slide in place so you're going to need a 7 16 and then a phillips head to go up under the bottom there so you want to um, unscrew that bolt and remove it and then um you also want to rotate the track so that the window there's an open window right by where the uh, where that bolt is. So um, I'm gonna go ahead and remove that bolt and then bring you back, so stay tuned. All right, bolt is removed, now comes the fun part. Um, I'm gonna come to the back and rotate the track. Let's see if I can show you here. Rotate the track so that the window lines up with your slide, where, with your slide right there. Um, a lot of guys say you have to remove the skid in order to pull these out. I do it without removing the skid. Um, I pull the, the slider right through one of those open windows there. So um, 
yeah, it's a little bit of a finagle, but to me it's a lot less work than actually um, putting the uh, uh, pulling the skid out. So anyways, um, I usually like to start, which I already did, but take a pry bar right there just to get it moving a little bit. Now, I think I mentioned earlier, when you put new slides on, it's a good idea to put lubricant down inside the, the valley of the slide. Uh, some people use grease, some people use silicone, whatever. I actually used Teflon last time because it dries, um, dries dry and it doesn't collect stuff. So it slid out a little bit pretty easily. So let's just see if we can get this thing um, set up and see how easy it slides out. So uh, let me get you up on the tripod and I'll, I'll uh, give her a whirl. Let's see what happens. All right, I kind of halfway got this started already, but what, like I said, what I did was I, I took my pry bar and I pushed it back so that the, uh, the um, slide was up against the window. And then I rotated the window so that um, the slide would clear it. I reached in with a needle nose vice grips and I gave her a little tug and she started moving already. So we're gonna pull her the rest of the way. And look at that. Came right out. So again, Using lube inside these makes a huge difference, and that, that Teflon made a big difference for me. So, I mean, real, real, real easy. So I'll set up the other side, and I'll show you that one as well. I'll try to show you the whole process this time, so stay tuned. Okay, here we go. We're going to go up front, get the pie bar on the front there, see if we can get it to move. Yep, she's moving already. Okay. Now we'll come to the back here, and we will get the window to clear. It should be pretty much where we want it to be anyways, but um, right, we'll go ahead and get our, get in those bite strip, start a pulling. Okay, get a little bit more bite, we gotta move a little bit. Okay, now see so if we can pull it out. Yep. Easy peasy. There we go. All right, here we go. That The old slide rails are out. Um, you can see here, focus. There is some life left in them, but um, it's starting to wear down because you can see the, the wear lines on here, right? So we're starting to get close to that danger zone there. But um, so we're maybe, maybe, maybe been able to get one or two more rides out of it, but it's pretty darn thin. So Good thing we pulled these right away before the season started. All right, so we're kind of at a standstill now. Um, I, like I said, I have located that new uh, new servo. I should run and be able to get that tonight. Guy has it um, pretty much locally. Um, and I'm still waiting on my new slides to come in the mail. So um, I'll get that servo, show you guys how to install that and reinstall the power valves. We'll check that to make sure they're working okay. Um, actually, we won't until we get our new slides in. So... Uh, Slight intermission until we get our parts, but I will bring you back when we do. So stay tuned. Well, we're back the next day. I was actually able to get a brand used um, servo motor last night from uh, I got a I got a, but, a cousin that knows a guy, so uh, helps to have those connections. So um, he claims he bench tested it, so it should work. So we're gonna install it and find out. So to get the old one off here, we just have a clip. Um, just have to lift up on the little tab there and pull, and she pops right out. Uh, don't pull too hard on, uh, unless you know that it's you know loose. I lubed it up a little bit before I pulled it out. Set that off to the side. Now um, I went ahead and I cleaned up this terminal here just to make sure it was all good. But um, I'm going to lather some dielectric grease on there just to help give me a good seal around there. All right, now we'll go ahead and we'll plug the new one back in. Can only go one direction, so that helps. Come on, push her in until we hear click. Here's a little click. All right, now we can put our loop. Helps to get her in the right configuration. All right, so this this tube goes down, um, and now we can wrestle it back in where it was down here. <clears throat> Right there, I'm gonna get my two bolts. Get where I put them. There they are. I'm not gonna put the cover on just until I make sure that this thing works correctly. Um, so I'm just gonna tighten up the bolts that we have in here um, and then run my cables back in. So 
a little tight down here, but just take your time and you'll get it back to where it needs to be. All right, let's grab our ratchet. Man, fumbling with everything today. Be the wrong size. Get our 10 mil. Hopefully, y'all can see what I'm doing down here. It's a little tight, I know, but doing the best we can in a tight situation here. Okay, that one's tight. Go ahead and tighten this one up. Okay, that's snug. Now we'll go ahead and run our cables back in. Okay, all right. So we preserved the way they were. They were just like this. So um, you can see we got our notches down here. So I'm gonna do the inner one first. I'm gonna take him. One second. I'm gonna run it on the bottom side here. I'll turn this just so you can see a little bit better. So there's a um, the, the notches here that goes into, and this is where the cables run. So you want to make sure you're on the bottom side there because the turbo is going to, or the servo is going to activate that way. So now should be able to finagle that in there. Okay. Number one is in and let's get number two in Then we'll make sure we're secured where we need to be. Okay. Number two, whoop, number two is now in. All right. So now you want to rotate the servo down. And then get the, uh, oh, you know what? I got to go on the back side here. Shoot. That's okay. We'll get through this. Yeah, you want to go on the back side of your, uh, your coolant line here. All right, so again, we'll go with the back one first. And then we'll go with the. I'm sorry, we go with the front one first, get it in its place, then we'll go with the back one. Okay, now you want to go ahead and make sure that you are your retainers down there are inside the notch um, in the housing here, the one that broke off that I showed you in the previous the previous portion of the video. Make sure you're fully seated up in there. wrestling me a little bit. All right, I might have things crossed up there, so just give me a moment and I'll bring you back and I'll give you a close-up. All right, there we are. We're fully installed. So something to note, um, on these two, on the steel tubing that goes around the, the cables here, there's a shorter one and a longer one. The shorter one goes in the front, the longer one goes in the back, that way they don't interfere with each other. Now, like I said, you want to make sure that the uh, that the, the housing rides all the way up in the notch there. So what I did is I took a needle nose, whoop, I'll go in here and do it, yep, it's hard to do it on the camera at the same time. And I just squeeze the housing against the, the slot here to make sure that they're both fully seated, okay? So then I, then I went ahead and I just kind of tested my servo by hand a few times to make sure that things seem to be rolling smoothly. They do. All right. So you want your servo to be basically these notches um, level with the ground, um, parallel to the ground like this, right? So straight across. So that's where your neutral position is. All right. So now, um, like I said, we're going to leave the cover off. Now I'm going to go ahead and fire up the sled. Get the ass end up off the ground and see if we can get those uh, those power valves to fire here. So, one second. Now, the guy I got this from said it might take a couple cycles in order for it to work properly, but we'll give it a shot and see what happens. So, stay tuned. All right, I've got my track up all the way off the ground. Yes, I do not have my slides in there, but in this situation, it shouldn't much matter because um, the slides aren't actually going to be in contact with the track. And I'm not going to do this for very long, just long enough to see if those power valves are firing. So, we'll go ahead and key on... 
choke on, make sure nothing loose is flopping around. Hopefully my light stays where it's at, but we'll see if we can get it on something a little bit more solid here. Here, we'll put it on the exhaust. And hopefully we can see what's going on. All right, we'll give her a pull. Okay, hopefully you saw that, but it looks like the power valves are working as they're supposed to. I'm going to go ahead and get this place aired out because she's all smoky and I'll bring you back. Alright, we've got our cover back on, so everything under here should be good. I topped off my oil, I've got my antifreeze to the level it always goes to. It's a good idea to take a look at your brakes too to make sure you still got plenty of pad left, which I do. And I already checked them to make sure that they're functioning properly, so that's good. Um, brake fluid's where it needs to be. Up here. Um, let's see. So the only, so I'm gonna go ahead and close the hood. But the only thing I can do now, um, until I get my slides in, which should be in a day or two, is uh, I'll check my carbides. So I'm gonna go. Normally, what I do is I just uh, grab onto it with my winch, lift them up, and look underneath there. It's gonna be hard to show you guys. So I'm gonna go ahead and pop one of those off. Really easy. You just got four bolts here or four nuts. You gotta pop off and then pound them down a little bit, and they pop right out the bottom. So I'll I'll pull one off. I'm actually gonna pull off the left one. Because the left one is going to have the most wear, since uh, normally if you're if you're going down like the side of a road or across a bridge or whatever, the right one is normally in snow. The left one is normally on the on the uh, ground, so that's going to take more of the wear. So I'm going to pop that one off and see what that one looks like compared to the other one, um, and we will uh, address whether we need to get some or not. So give me a minute. All right, I went ahead and I pulled off both sets just so I could show you the side-by-side -side comparison. So this is the set that would have been on the left. This is the set that was on the right. And, like, look at the wear on the front here in comparison. And look at the wear right here compared to here, right? So these are still usable, um, not the worst thing in the world. So these are 6-inch shaper bars, by the way. So 6-inch meaning the, the carbide length here is 6 inches. And shaper meaning it's got this concave shape on both sides. Um, that way, like when you're turning, it kind of cups the snow and helps push it. But anyways, so yeah, you can see there is some un uneven wear here. Um, I could just rotate these and be fine. Um, I do have a set I took off a different sled sitting over here. They're the exact same carbides, but you can see these are a lot more even and a lot better shape up here. So I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to actually throw these on the sled since I've got them sitting here and they're in pretty good shape and then um, take these and use them as a spare. So no harm, no foul there. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. But yeah, it's always a good good opportunity to check this stuff before the season just to make sure that there's nothing, uh, you know, that they're not completely worn out or anything like that. So I'm going to go ahead and throw these back on or throw these on. And then um, that's going to be it until I get my slides in. So I'll, uh, I'll bring you back once those slides come back in. So stay tuned. All right, folks, fast forward about a week and we're back. Uh, my new slides are in. So laying the old ones next to the new ones here. So here's my old ones. Here's my new ones. You can see here, like in the in the wear area, not completely worn out, but they are wearing down compared to the new ones. So it's a good thing I changed these. These still have a little bit of life, so I could probably use them in a pinch if I needed to. But um, best I changed them. So what I'm going to have to do is trim them because the you know they don't come in the exact length. So um, these are a little bit longer. So I'm going to go ahead and mark where these were, and then uh, go ahead and cut them off. I'm going to use a um, miter saw, but you can use a hacksaw, you can use a sawzall, whatever you want. Just make sure to put a little bit of an angle on here um, at the end so that it, it it rides up, you know, the way that the track does and it doesn't hang up um, as that track is coming around there. So I'm going to go ahead and cut that off, cut both of them off and then we'll go over to the sled and I'll show you how I install them. So sit back and I'll bring you back. Alright, we're back. I got my slides cut the length here and you can see I put an angle on there. Now we're going to get those installed. So I think I mentioned when I took them off that um, I utilize a lubricant, and here's what I use. PB Blaster Dry Lube, which is actually a Teflon. It sprays on wet, but it dries really quick. 
um, so it doesn't leave a residue or you know things don't cling to it. So that seems to work really good for me. So what I did is um, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to well first off I'm going to take my um, new slide, spray a good healthy dose of this all the way down the length, <clears throat> like so. Get it in there. Yeah, I got some waste. All right. Then I'm going to go ahead and spray the side of the rails too, from front to back. Whoa, lost my noodle. That back on there. So start at the front, work my way back, and then you can go through from the other side and try to get to the, the back of the rail as best you can. Don't worry about overspray there, it's fine to get that on the on the track and stuff, not really a big deal. There. Alright, so now we're gonna go ahead and see if we can slide these bad boys on. So you want your you want your cut end with your angle to go towards the back, your whole, your area with the screw hole to go to the front, right? So same process to put it on as when I took it off. You gotta get down here, find the window, and get it lined up with the groove on the rail there. So right about there. It's gonna be a little bit of a fight to get it through the, um, through the rubber. So it wouldn't hurt to actually spray a little bit on the outside, at least just to get it started. That. There. Come on. Try not to hit the tripod in the process. Oh. There we go. Okay. Now we should be able to get that started. There. See, they're sliding right on. That Teflon makes it easy. Helps take your dead blow to help you with the last little bit here. You can even take your needle nose vice grips. And just push it on that last little bit. Go up front, make sure your screw holes are where they need to be. Looks like I'm there. Then we'll go ahead and put ourselves back on. So remember this is a 716 set you need and you need a Phillips head. Perfect. your nut, like I just did. Come on now, where'd you go? track rotated up a little bit and it was pushing up on the screw head, making it a little bit more difficult. other side off camera and then we'll bring you back once we're done so stay tuned all right the last thing I'm gonna do here is check my uh, track to see how much sag I have in the middle there so you know I've got it suspended with my winch so I'm gonna go ahead and get it level ish with my winch go ahead and drop it down. right about there should be good enough 
Okay, we'll go ahead and move our level out of the way. And if you will take a look at one of my previous videos, I showed you how to do this process as well too, but I'm, I'll, I'll give you a quick quick version of that right now. But um, So I usually use this bolt as my bogey here, so I rotate the track a little bit just to make sure that um, I'm in between my two cogs there. So I like to keep this about two inches, okay? That's just what I found runs really good on this sled. So the track, you, you check this because the track does stretch over time. Um, so you can get more and more sagging. If it gets too saggy, you're going to be um, skipping, skipping teeth on your drive cog up there, your drive shaft. So you want to keep it reasonably tight here. So um, actually, go ahead. Yeah, this right back here is the bolt that I use. Okay. So now, I like, like I said, two inches is about what I like to use here. So let's let's take a gander. So I measure. I don't push down on the surface here. I just let it. Let it hang free, um, and I measure from the, the surface down here up to the bottom of my slide here and see where I'm at. So I am right about at two inches, okay? I'll go ahead and check the other side too, just to make sure where we want to be over there. And over there we're at about two inches, so that's good. That means we're uh, we're hanging level. We're hanging level, so we're not cocked one way or the other. So um, if it if it does get to the point where you are hanging sagging too much down there, you want to go ahead and adjust your tension so that you uh, get it get it you know back up to where you be. So to do that, you loosen this jam nut here, back it off, do the same thing on the other side, and you can crank in clockwise on this bolt here and that'll that'll push your rear axle backwards and give more tension in your track so i have a uh um, as i mentioned a, a video where i had this skid out and i put it back in and i'll put a link to that right up here that way if you want to see that whole process um you uh can see how you do that but um right now i think i'm good so uh yeah really all i need now is snow Everything melted here. We're, we're, we're only December 2nd right now, so usually it's a good month or so before I get good snow here. But um, at least we know we're ready to go. So hopefully this helps somebody out. Um, if you like this sort of thing, please like and subscribe and uh, leave me comments on what I could do better for next time. So until the next one, signing off.